Hello friends, welcome to the Third Benches YouTube channel. Today we will see the solutions of CSAR Life Science June 2019 Part A. The first question is, in a bacterial cell a protein is synthesized at random location in the cytoplasm. The protein has to reach one pole of the cell for its appropriate function. The protein reaches a pole by which of the following four options. So, Bacteria is a prokaryote. It does not have any nucleus or membrane bound organelles like Golgi bodies or endoplasmic reticulum. Whereas the ribosomes are scattered around in the um, cytoplasm, cytoplasm pool. Uh, so the ribosome is responsible for the protein synthesis. So when the protein is synthesized, it is usually transported to the other organelles in the cytoplasm by random movement. If at all the protein has to be delivered at the cell membrane, it is done with the help of translocon. So the translocon or uh, they are they are sitting in the membrane, cell membrane and it helps uh, the ribosome to synthesize the appropriate membrane proteins over them and then it gets attached to the cell membrane. If or else the ribosome that is scattered is brought to that point in the translocon with the help of specific signal sequence and then it is synthesized. So these are all the case in case uh, the protein is synthesized at the membrane or else it is through random movement it is reaching the appropriate organelles. So option 2 is the right answer. The next question is, a precious stone breaks into four pieces having weight in the proportion 1 is to 2 is to 3 is to 4. The value of such a stone is proportional uh, to the square of its weight. What is a percent loss in the value incurred due to breaking? So, we have, there is a big uh, precious stone and it is basically broken into four pieces in this given ratio. And the question they have asked is to find the percent loss in the cost due to the, the, the that breakage. So let us consider this if, if it is given in ratio that means there is a common factor uh, for all the uh, numbers in represented in ratios. So it is uh, 1 is to 2 is to 3 is to 4 is represented as 1x, 2x, 3x and 4x. And the weight of the big stone is uh, the sum of all. So that is basically 1x plus 2x plus 3x plus 4x which is equal to 10x. Now uh, the uh, in if at all we have to calculate the loss it is done by subtracting the total minus the sum of all the fractions sum of all fractions. Right. Now what is the total? Uh, the total is 10x. Now it is given that the cost is proportional to the squares weight. So it is the square of the weight will give the cost. Now the sum of all this that is 1x square plus 4x square plus 9x square plus 16x square. So this will equal to 100x square minus 30x square which is equal to 70x square. So this is the final one. Now the uh, the person that is lost is the remaining of 70 that is 100 minus 70 which is equal to 30. So it is a 30 person that is lost because of the breakage of the whole into these four parts. Third question. Two runners starting together run on a circular path taking 6 and 8 minutes respectively to complete one round. How many minutes do they, late, do they meet later? Again for the first time on the start line assuming constant speeds. So for this sum we have to find uh, the LCM. So why should we find LCM is? LCM is least common multiple. So taking two numbers and finding its LCM we get the common factor that is that is common for the two numbers. So let us do that. You will come to know during the process. So let us take 6 and 8. And the common factor is 2. It's 3 and 4. And again 2. 3 and 2. No, nothing more than that. Then 2 into 2 into 3 into 2. This is the least common multiple. So LCM will be equal to 3 to the 6, 6 to the 12 and 24. And Taking this 24 and keeping the 6 and 8 minutes, 6 into what will give you 24? 
4 and similarly 8 into what will give you 24 it is 3 so continuing further from 24 we get he the 6 minute running guy would have taken 4 rounds and completed it by 24 minutes and the 8 minute running guy would have taken 3 would have completed 3 rounds and finished it by 24 minutes and at the 24th minute they both meet for the first time on the start line so option 2 is the right answer now which among the following diagrams represent women, mothers and human beings? When you see the second, third and fourth, this is quite easy, everyone could answer. Uh, you can see there are some leftover parts that is not included in uh, the other two diagrams. See here it is left, here it is left and here there are some portions that are being left and here, here, here. So there are some leftover portions. You have to understand that women and mother comes under human beings. So this would represent human beings and this would represent uh, women and this would represent mother. So option 1 is the right answer. Moving on to the fourth sum. The distribution of grades secured by students in a class is given in the table below. What is the least possible population of the class? So the, the options represent the population of the class. Let us take each and multiply it with the fraction. So when you take 2. See, when you take 2, you get 0.1 into 2 will give you 0.2. Uh, it is known that uh, the, the population cannot be in fraction. That is, A grade can't be obtained by 0.2 number of person. The persons can be only in whole number. So, you can neglect 1 at the first choice. And multiplying 4, the second one, 0.1 into 4, we get 0.4. Similarly, there can't be 0.4 number of persons. And similarly, 0.1 into 8, third option is 0.8. There can't be a fraction number of students. And the last one is 0.1 into 10. We get 1. So, one person among the whole got A grade. That is a valid one. So, into 10 is 1. Similarly, into 10 is 4 into 10 is 3 and into 10 is 2. This makes sense. So the least possible population of the class scoring all these grades is fourth option that is 10. Fifth sum. The 9 numbers x1, x2, x3 till x9 are in ascending order. Their average m is strictly greater than all the first 8 numbers. Which of the following is true? So it is given that it is all in ascending order and it is all in ascending. This has to be kept in mind. And till x8, it is less than the average of whole. So x8 is less than the mean. That is average. Now taking the first one. Now let us do the sum. It is given as x1 plus x2 till x9 by 9 will give us the mean. That is what they have mentioned as average m. Now the uh, the x1 plus x2 till x9 is equal to 9m. Taking the first option where the average of all things is greater than m. Let us check the first option. So x1 plus x2 till x9 plus m by 10 now. Now this can be written as the whole part is given here. From first equation you can say it is 9m plus m by 10 which is equal to 10m by 10 which is equal to m but the uh, but the option given is it is greater than m so this can't be right so option 1 is not the right answer similarly the second option is average of all is less than m no average of all is equal to m with along with m so this is also not the right answer the third option is average of x1 till x9 plus m is equal to m that is right because that is what we had obtained here so third option is the right answer similarly taking the fourth the average of x1 plus till x9 plus m is less than m this is again not the right option so option 3 is the right answer where the average of everything equals to m moving on to the next question a boy and a girl make the following statements. Which one of the following is, uh, the of which up, at most one is correct? The option statement one is, the one in a white shirt says, I am a girl. The one in a blue shirt says, I am a boy. Which of the following is the correct inference? Now it is given that at most one is correct. Meaning that at most one means either one is right or none of them is right. So consider that at most one is right. Let us solve this. 
so at most one so at most one means one is uh, telling the truth and another one is lying right he is lying so if we take a boy and he is telling the truth he would say that i am a girl right thinking that the first case is he is lying so he would say i am a girl and in this case the girl should be saying the truth because at most one is right we are taking that in that case he she would say i am a girl right so in that case both the statements uh, should be given as i am a girl and i am a girl similarly taking the second case where he is telling the truth so in that case he would say i am a boy he is telling the truth and in this case she would lie so she would say i am a boy so in that case the question should have been come as i am a girl and i am a boy or like i am a girl i am a girl i am a boy i am a boy now in that case it is not right so both of them are lying in this case that means uh, the one in white shirt shirt is actually a boy and he is lying that i am a girl and the one in blue shirt is actually a girl and she is lying that i am a boy so from this we, from the option we can say statement 1 is correct but statement 2 is incorrect no statement 2 is correct but statement 1 is incorrect no both the statements 1 and 2 are incorrect that is right the correctness of the statement 1 and 2 cannot be ascertained why can't you ascertain because you already know the correct statement that is both the boy and the girl are lying and they are telling the ulta of their genders so the correctness of the statements can be ascertained and the third option is the right answer Uh, this is our expected solution of the csir june 2019 please let us know your suggestions in the comment section below thank you for watching bye